everybody. So I have been tweaking my homeschool planning all year long and I kind of wanted to show how it started and how it looks now and maybe explain a little bit about why I decided to change things and how I'm using it and how it's helping me. So let's jump in. Uh, first, I do have to say that there is absolutely nothing wrong with this planner. In fact, it kind of makes me sad not to be using my Anna Vance Paper Co. teacher planner or homeschool planner. Um, I was thinking about doing this video and like, how do I describe how much I love this, but why I can't use it? And what I came up with is it's like, imagine as a young mom, you have a diaper bag and you finally find the perfect diaper bag. It's designer. It's beautiful. It's the exact size, shape, color, everything that you want. But now your kids are no longer in diapers, so you don't need it. And unfortunately, I feel like that's where I'm at. This is my diaper bag. My kids are potty trained and I just don't need this huge planner. I've really downsized and incorporated my planning into my regular everyday life planning. So real quick, if you're just not familiar with the planning side of my channel, here on my channel on Wednesdays, I put out a homeschool related video. But on the Sundays, I put out a planning video. And in fact, I started this channel as a planning channel. And slowly over the years, I've done more and more homeschool videos as well. So if you want more details about my personal planner, hop on over there. Not over there. I say that like it's a separate channel. Check out those videos um, if you haven't already. So one thing I have learned kind of as a quick overview so you don't have to watch every homeschool planner I've ever done before. I do more of a record keeping versus a planning style of planning. Um, I live in a state where I do not have to turn in records. So that does play in a lot to my ability to go from this to incorporating it into my main planner. And I've learned that apart from a few lists, so few lists like this or where did the, where did I put those lists? It's been so long since I've actually opened this planner. Uh, lists like this, um, an attendance list, that would be another one. I just don't need this much planning because I have a personal planner that came first. So I don't know, maybe if I had started personal planning when I started homeschooling and I used all of the available things here it would be different but I don't I started with my main planner my smaller planners and I like it so this is what I took and what I started the school year with um it really was a good system it set up perfectly I could actually pick this up if I needed to um but really what happened is in my personal planning again see my personal planning videos for more of the backstory why I switched from a planner I'd been using before to this right here, which is actually a blank notebook. It's called Astology. The size of it is called A5, if you're unfamiliar with planner terms. Um, I have a gorgeous cover from Galen Leather Co. in here, all these details on other videos of mine. And what's cool is with a blank notebook like this, I'm really able to turn my planner into anything I want. And that includes incorporating homeschool things in here and once I started using this planner I really was able to do whatever I want whereas in my other personal planner I was a little more restricted and so it was harder to incorporate my homeschool planning and uh, a couple months ago or a month ago I just really I was like I want my homeschool planning here it's so much easier than carrying these two things around if I need to have both planners for some sort of meeting or planning day or whatever I'm doing. And so I was able to really just take what I needed from here and condense it into here. So let me kind of walk you through it. Um, one of the main things that I would use this planner for on a daily basis was this checklist. So this actually represents two weeks worth of school because I really liked to make it smaller and go like this and see everything at a glance. So as you can see, even when I was using this planner, it felt very big and I really wanted to try to use up as little space as possible, whether it's on my lap because I'm doing school with little ones on the sofa or at the table where we're all sprawled out, the more I can save space, the better. 
Um, the things I really need to keep track of are what each of my five kids are doing on a daily basis so I can either monitor my older two and make sure that certain subjects aren't falling through the cracks. So they're pretty independent at this point. And once they know what to do, they just can kind of do it with little help or no help from me. And then my three little ones are pre-readers. Well, one is, it, she's really soaring, guys. It's so exciting to see her go from, uh, you know, having learned phonics to really gaining that confidence and she's sort of starting to take off. It's just, it's one of my favorite parts of homeschooling is to see that. Um, but as far as like school goes, in that sense, they're pre-readers and early readers. So I have to do all of the things individually with them and as I'm rotating through them and taking turns at first it was very confusing like who did I do math with and who didn't I do math with did I forget to do phonics with somebody or did I get everybody so having a checklist really helped me because I was juggling three energetic children six years old and younger and then most of us try to do some group subjects or we'll do Bible or something like that and trying to alternate and fit everything in and rotate things. Um, it just requires maybe a note that, oh, on Mondays we're doing music composer study. It's Tuesdays that we're doing our artist study and Wednesdays we're doing Shakespeare and Thursdays we're doing Spanish. So um, after a while in the school year, I can have things like that memorized, but for the first few months, I'm like sitting there and it's Thursday and I, I can't remember for the life of me, what are we supposed to do today? So I have to have um, kind of a list like this that reminds me what we're doing and then I can just open the books to where we left off. So I would have this out and try to use this to guide me and help me remember what we were doing at the beginning of the school year and then I need it less and less because I have things memorized and also um, this gets tweaked a lot. And as I mentioned, as soon as I had this planner where I just had so much more flexibility, I really wanted all of this to be in here. And so what I have done is add some key spreads. Okay, where are we? Here we are. Key spreads into my planner. And I am using them in here instead of in my huge book. And it really helps me because, um, for instance, this has to do with our history. And I like to do an activity every week that corresponds to what we learned. It's all in our curriculum. So if you're interested, see our curriculum haul videos. And then it all also comes with long lists of suggested additional reading. And I, over the summer, had some time and the desire. And I kind of went through every single chapter and I picked out the books that I wanted to have eventually to correspond with chapters. So over here, I just write the chapter number and I do a few weeks ahead of time. And then I either decide if I'm gonna check it out from the library, in which case I put it on hold, or I have purchased a few books and then we have them in our library. And a lot of times I'll be sitting at my computer like doing emails for my own personal life and things that I have in my personal life and I'll be using this planner because this is where I'll make notes, like I need to email or call this person. But now I have my homeschool lists in here and I'm able to be like, oh, I should put some books on hold for the next couple of chapters in history. And all I have to do is flip to my tab, come back here and see where I am and go a couple of chapters ahead of time and put them on hold and then it's all done. And I don't have to dig this out and I don't have to dig for the list in the back and figure out where I was. And it's saving me a lot of time and it's saving me a lot of space and running around and it's all here. Um, another thing that's really going on in my life right now is we are actually in a busier season. Um, my kids are a little bit older. We've been doing some enrichment, extracurricular activities that we've never done before. Uh, our schedule's more packed than we've ever had it be in the past and it's beautiful but it's a little crazy and it's been hard for me to kind of gain a rhythm and because of that my personal life felt a little more up and down as well as homeschool and it really helps i now have my homeschool and here which one do i want to show first i have my homeschool and my everyday life kind of in the same 
area, like pages apart. And it's helping me kind of bring them together a little better and balance them a little more evenly. And it's just, it's just helping me mentally to, to get in as much school as I want or we need, as well as to manage life and to kind of bring the stress level and the chaos level down and make me feel a little more at peace. So in my personal planner, again, tons of videos on all of this in detail. I, this is my week, like my normal week, um, you know, things we have to go to, dinners we're going to eat, and then here's my homeschool spread. So all of this I took and reformatted. I used Google Docs and just, you know, whatever I could to create a table and create these checklists. And I created it this way so I can just cross things off as I go. And then I left a blank page over here because I like to write notes. And this is not a great week for why the notes are super helpful. Here's one, I'll come back to this printed page in a second. Um, I had a sick kid, so he didn't do school on Monday, um, but all my other kids did. So it's just kind of an explanation of, of why somebody's crossed out and other kids, like their stuff is checked off. Um, different little things like that, books I wanna read. So taking that book list, oops, I forget that I have a tab because I could never find it. So the books that I picked here, it's no use to me if they're just hidden back here. I have to pull them up on a weekly basis and maybe write down what I want to read to the kids or have the kids read on their own, depends on the kid, depends on the book and so forth and put it right here. And then I'm looking at this every single day. I'm looking at this in the evening because it's my main planner and I wanna know if I need to get meat to thaw out of the out of the freezer for dinner tomorrow. But then also my homeschool stuff is here and I can be reminded, oh, I wanted to read this book. I didn't read it today. I'm about ready to put my three-year-old to bed. This is a picture book. I can read it to her then. So it's just, it's helping me incorporate so much more into our life and then I'm not forgetting things and really our homeschool and our life are so intertwined. It's hard to really see sometimes where one begins and one ends. And it's, I want it to be that way, but I was forgetting stuff because it was all in my homeschool planner. My homeschool planner was on the homeschool shelf with our math book. We'd already finished math for the day. So I put this away and I didn't think about the book I wanted to read at bedtime, you know, just little things like that. So I did start out with a more basic calendar or calendar check thing. And I just cross things off as we go. This is not meant to be a record keeping thing as much as it is to keep me on track. Like I'm, I'm in the throw of it on Tuesday and I'm like, oh, okay, we read section one. What do we need to do next? Oh yeah, we're going to have a narration. Got that done. We did our map. Let's move on to science. Okay. We're reading this. Um, I'm helping this one with math and I help this one with phonics. Oh no, I forgot to help this one with math, you know, little things like that. So that's, this was for me less of a plan and more of like what to do next. And obviously if you don't get to something, you don't get to something. So that's no problem, but I, I needed to know what to do next. But then if you saw my surviving the seasons video and my first quarter update, here, as we move into the second quarter, I've tweaked a lot. I've dropped a lot of subjects that are just kind of extra busy work things in our life and in our schedule right now. And so that's when I created this more colorful version and it actually included almost like a time schedule for our week. And it, I wanted to try adding in a couple of fun things that we really wanted to do, but we didn't have time for during our school kind of our official school days in the week. And so I'm gonna to try to do them on Saturday. So that's why I created this table. And this one I really like, and I will probably return to it um, because it's helpful and it's colorful and it just makes things very simple to, again, check off and, and whatnot. And for instance, we did all of this on Thursday and for some reason I never checked it off and that's okay. This is not a record of any kind for me. I don't need to keep records like that for my own personal use and I don't need to keep records to like turn in somewhere. So I don't have to worry about that. 
this is for me in the moment to know what to do next. And so if it's not checked off, that's actually fine, but it does tell me information. So I know I had a sick kid. Um, I have notes of, about that over here and so on. Well, this week I went even more unique, I guess, different in my homeschool planning and I'm using this. And I think I might only use this for this week. I don't know, I don't know, I need to tweak it because it doesn't have enough information on here about all the things I need to do. Like today we should have done some history and science and um, like a map. See, I can't even remember what it is. That's why I use this. So we should have done a sketch in science. Yeah, a map in our history. And that's not on here, but some of our extra stuff is. So right here, I had a note to read a certain book. Um, here, I specified what the activity was for our history and for our science. And then over here, I actually listed the supplies I needed for these two things. Um, and so what I might need to do next week is have this and this together and then if I have supplies like this, I can use a sticky note maybe um, because I need to see what to do next. But here's some details. So right here it says do additional reading or an activity or a craft for history. But this doesn't tell me which book I've picked and decided to do. Um, it is back here. That information is here, but I don't have my science in here. So that doesn't help me with science and sometimes to have it back here is a little confusing it helps me when i'm planning ahead but it's a little bit harder to pinpoint what i need for that week so that's why i wrote it here so here's a book we're going to read here's the activity we're going to do and here's the supplies we needed so somehow i think i need to next week combine this and this and have notes pages which will be very easy to do. I can either fit it in here or I can do this kind of stuff on a sticky note like I think I already said. So that is how I have taken all of this, especially the day-to-day -day planning, and put it here. Um, I did have to sacrifice a couple of things. Well, hang on, I'll show you this. I did bring in, oops, a an attendance tracker. So it just goes like this. Hang on, let me make sure I'm in frame. And the attendance tracker in here, oops, is a little different, but it's the same. It's actually um, an attendance tracker that I made a couple years ago. So typically you do 180 days for a school year. And I like to just check them off when they're done. So I can see visually, oh, we're a quarter of the way through, we're half of the way through, you know, that kind of thing. And I can see how many we've done and how many we have left to go. I do not check this off every single day. Um, every few days or weeks, I'll read the date in the corner so I know what the last day was. And then I can check some off. Um, I don't need to keep track of attendance and I don't need to like turn it in in the state that I live in. So I've actually stopped tracking attendance because I know we're kind of doing school like five or six days a week, especially if we do some stuff on Saturday. And it's not really important how many days we do. We're taking kind of a year round homeschooling approach right now. And I'm just, whenever my kid is finished and does the last lesson of math, whether that's in March or whether that's in July, then they're done with math. We're not going to have an official last day of school this current school year, at least as far as I'm looking in the future right now. That's very unique for me. I've never done it that way. Um, but it kind of makes the 180 days less important because we're just going to keep doing school and we're going to go till we finish subjects and we'll just pick up in the next thing when we're ready. If we need a small break or something, we'll do that. More to come. That's that's very new to me, very unusual for me. I like to be a, a little bit more prepared, planned, or in control. And yes, I'm very flexible within my framework, but I'm kind of throwing out the framework for the first time. So <laughs> if you wanna see the Hot Mess Express, then subscribe to my channel and climb aboard because that's how we're doing homeschool this year. We're doing it on faith. 
we're doing it with enough of a plan that we're doing stuff, we're being intentional, but we're not having so much of a plan. So I am keeping attendance in here. Um, some things that I decided I really just don't need at all. Um, I like to reference them sometimes, but I don't need to is like here was where I planned, oh, this is when we're gonna start and this is our official last week and this is how we're paced out and here's where our breaks are. I've thrown that out the window for now. Uh, we're gonna do what we need to do when we need to do it. We're gonna work hard. If we need a break, we're gonna take it. Um, here was my attendance. It looks a little different, but they were both functioning the same, so I do still have that. Um, I never use like the monthly calendar and stuff because I have monthly calendars here where I would keep my personal stuff anyways and I never wanted to take the time to copy it over here. I never needed to look at it in here. So you can see how my personal planner has really just sucked in and incorporated so much of my homeschool planning. I took this and condensed it and I tweak it as I need it, as I mentioned. Um, I took this. I... I actually took this and there's a feature usually when you print where you can do how do you oh, what is it called it's like print two pages per sheet or something like that and so it automatically formats it half size and it put both of them here so basically it shrunk it for me is what it did um i wasn't using these and so they were kind of wasted they're great spreads they're very useful if you use them um, these just help me get my head around how much to do a week or per day. So like history, if we want to finish it within the school year, we need to average one chapter per week, that kind of thing. But once I figure out what it is, one chapter a week, five pages a, a week or a day, I don't really need to reference this anymore because then I know what to do for my school year. So even in this planner, as soon as I figured this out, that was it. I didn't need to reference this page. Um, one thing that I have always tried to keep, but I always fail at every year is a reading list. I use Pinterest. I have Pinterest boards like by age or by genre or like historical early chapter books. I mean, I just get so much more organization and better ideas there and my kids will remember if they read something so if i try to get them to read a book they've already read they'll tell me i don't need to keep this and reference it it's a nice idea but i just don't um this is a way to check and see how far along we've gone in certain subjects but when i threw out the whole we have to finish by this date and sort of keep pace with certain things I don't need this because they'll be done when they're done with it. So this is completely obsolete now. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, so this was actually just a planning page as I was picking, well, these are all the subjects my kids need or I want to do. What curriculum am I gonna get for each of my kids' age levels? So this actually was just sort of a reference sheet of the curriculum I picked this year and how it was kind of incorporated. So like Bible, we were all doing the same Bible and this is already changed, which is, oops, sorry, which is totally fine and not unusual, but this is what I used when I was planning. So this was like six months ago when I was preparing for the school year, I was using this and I just stuck it in the back, not, not for anything other than kind of like a record. And this is sort of how I came to decide on all of these subjects and what all of these books are for. So. Again, not something I needed to transfer into my main planner. So there you have it. I, I hope this was an interesting or helpful video. I know that planning can really be such a different thing for different people. And if there's one thing I've learned in the homeschool planning and the plan, re, like regular personal planning world for how many years have I do, been doing this? Let me think like seven or eight years, you have to do what works for you in the season that you are in. People are always talking about finding planner piece or the perfect planner. It doesn't exist. This was the perfect planner for me last year. I changed a lot in what we are doing, how many kids I'm using, the planner that I'm using for personal. All of that changed this year. And I would be more frustrated trying to force myself to use something that doesn't fit me now for the sake of planner piece 
than if I just kind of went with the flow. And I think even if you are in a state where you are required to keep attendance or you are required to keep more detailed records, you can still adapt as you go and just make sure that as you switch from this one to this one or whatever, that you are keeping accurate and up to date information and not losing any. And you too can plan for the season that you're in. Okay, guys, I will continue to update you as the homeschool year goes on. Um, I don't know why this has been such an up and down thing for me this year. It just I just feel like life in general has been like this for me and I am just trying to keep on with what's going on. I'm trying to thrive and not just survive. And so that's one of the reasons that I plan in the first place and why I have found having this kind of combination of homeschool and personal planning for me to be all in one to be so helpful is because it's it's taken me from survival mode and now I'm actually starting to catch my breath and feel peaceful and feel like they're not two things that I'm trying to force like before they felt like two magnets that were opposite and pushing against each other instead of being two pieces of a perfect puzzle as a homeschooler I want life and homeschool, the area where they overlap to be a little bit gray and to not be so clearly defined. And this is helping me achieve that and also just kind of keep my brain straight. So try this if you feel like you can relate to my chaos and hot mess or stick with your lovely teacher planner because they are so useful. They are so well done. And let me know in the comments below how your homeschool planning is going. Have you even used a homeschool planner? What do you use? Do you feel like it's working for you in your season? If so, I could use that encouragement that you are, are having a great planner right now. Um, if you're kind of wobbling a little like me, let me know. I'd love to chat with you. It's a safe spot. Feel free to comment. And thank you guys so much for joining me. Okay, I will talk to you in my next video. Until then, bye.